no problem. Okay, um, I apologize. My uh, uh, I basically freezed, and then I uh, had a signal that said that uh, there is something wrong with your audio. Um, so I have to get out, and then I couldn't come back, and we had that noise. Um, so we'll just continue, and I uh, apologize for our viewers for that. Um, I was uh, I was about to ask uh, it was or description, a complete idea uh, of what, what those means, and he didn't have clarity on the project. In a way, yes. Uh, because the charter was drafted in, in uh, Eritrea, uh, we think clearly laid down parameters. By the time we, we, I returned to Wallaga and through that came to Addis Ababa, a lot had changed. Uh, for example, the, the TPLF had gone out and inviting elites from the various southern uh, groups to organize themselves. And overnight there were organizations representing the Kambata, the Hadiya, and so on and so forth. This created uh, a crisis of some sort that TPLF actually, or Malas himself, managed very well. Uh, these, the, these groups were antagonistic to each other, and that could be exploited. The other thing is that uh, the difficulty was that the TPLF leadership, including Mullahs, could not anymore adhere to the Vanguard Party for USSR. This example, groups like the OPD are supposed to uh, rule Oromia, uh, and them um, is to rule Amhara area, but under strict centralized guidance. Now, so long as he was uh, alive and actively leading, he could exert a lot of influence on uh, these institutions. But once he was removed from the scene, difficulties arose. Let me explain it differently. Malla sat at the juncture where the civil and uh, military institutions inter intersected, as well as the state and party institutions. Mm -hmm. He knew all four. He had such a stature that he could orchestrate all four of these uh, very important institutions. Once he was not there anymore, whoever succeeded him, unless they had the same kind of stature, the orchestration of these four uh, institutions would break down. I think we are starting to see that. Mm. I, I'll definitely come back to this point uh, toward the end of our conversation. Um, I, I want to come back to you uh, again, Mr. Lencho. Um, uh, in your 1999 book, um, Ethiopia at the Ethiopian State at Crossroads, um, you talk about how uh, national liberation fronts at the time in Ethiopia were very much um, um, animated and, and, and informed by a Maoist understanding of politics, the party, state, society relations, and so on and so forth. Um, and you talk about um, how. TPLF and, and, and Mellers were basically unable to stomach the idea that they can't transfer power uh, at the ballot box, precisely because of that Maoist understanding. I wanted to ask you, to what extent Mellers uh, subscribed to that ideology uh, while in power? Incidentally, I have yet to see any Ethiopian leader uh, to showing any willingness to hand over power peacefully. And this is the problem I have also with the opposition, even now. That is one. Number two, regarding our Maoist 
background, there was a reason for it. The uh, formula, the, the writings of Mao, uh, led one generation of third world revolutionaries. Uh, and we had reasons to believe in it is miraculous uh, capacity to deliver victory. We grew up at a time when the Vietnam War was going on. A small backward society fighting the mightiest nation on earth and prevailing. If the Vietnamese could do it against such a mighty uh, power, we could do it to a backward Mangistu Haile Mariam. That is the calculation and that is why we had to study that more than post power. After you capture power, what will happen? Very likely all of us would have uh, uh, designed ourselves, reinvented ourselves as a vanguard party in the, in the trend that then was very popular. I, I, if I could come in on this, I think, yes. Yes. Um, I mean, in my discussions with Melis on, on, on democracy, we debated a lot the democratic developmental space, and I said, I can see the development, you, know, you can see the roads, the bridges, you know, etc., etc. Where is the democracy? And his candid answer actually was that democracy, as, as we understand it, has to wait. Democracy, is, uh, in, in terms of a, a, a competitive democracy, if it is introduced today in Ethiopia, he said the rent seekers will win. The rent seekers who, who just are interested in power in order to, to um, line their own pockets for, for their own political, factional issues, not for the good of the nation. Those are the people who, who will win. And he singled out the, the opposition in 2005 as being exemplary of that. He said what we need is another 15 years of accelerated growth. Um, and by which time when Ethiopia becomes a middle income country, then he says, then it's possible to, to, to have a transition towards a, a, a democratic system in which you can have competitive elections, you know, on, and with a level playing field in which one party will not mind ceding party power to another. And, and he was candid that EPRD is not going to cede power unless there is another party that is contending that also has the, the basically the same vision of, 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 of developmental, um, democratic developmental Ethiopia. Mm. And you may, you may agree or disagree with it, but it, 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 it is a coherent point of view and one that's worth certainly taking into consideration. You, you, I have two problems with uh, Malas once released the conclude the conclusion chapters of a forthcoming book. So he made it very difficult for us. If we keep quiet, we go along with it. Mm -hmm. If we create inadequate information, so I, I did something. I tried to uh, create. Uh, came out after he, he passed away one chapter in an edited book on the de developmental state. Mm -hmm. I have three problems with that article. Number mm -hmm. one, on the issue of in Ethiopia under the leadership of the TPLF. Number two, the countries he quotes South Korea, Germany, J Japan. These were more or less homogeneous societies in which the party that led uh, uh, the forces that led development had high level of legitimacy. And which the EPRD have never really won, in my opinion. Finally, in this article that I'm talking about, he says the developmental state must maintain its autonomy by relying on the armed forces and police. Basically, a military government. That is what is needed. And if we study developmental state, 
the history of the developmental state, there is an alternative type of autonomy, embedded autonomy. And he never mentioned that. I'm sure he was aware of it, but he never mentioned even cr to criticize. Mm -hmm. That is the fundamental problem I have with Malas. Uh, I, 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 I want to come back to you, uh, Professor Duval. Um, Shortly after Mellis uh, passed away in, I think, in, in December of 2016, 2012, you published a piece basically uh, looking at um, Mellis' developmental state theory. Uh, the piece was titled um, The Theory and Practice of Mellis in Um uh, well, I think you discuss that piece um, very approvingly, um, essentially endorsing most of uh, the central tenets that Mellis uh, put forward in that piece. Um, and and, and Mellis' central tenet, as you say it, is that um, the primary um, principle is economic development, um, political freedoms and democracy are subsidiary to uh, economic development. Um, and he has stated on several occasions that there is simply no uh, causal relationship between democracy and economic growth. Do you actually believe in, in that claim that there is no nexus at all? Uh, I, th I think the issue is, is, is a lot more complicated. I think that I do agree with the view